Knowing how to use an esophageal feeder or stomach tube is vital to supporting calves in their most vulnerable state. Whether you're providing colostrum to a newborn or treating a calf for dehydration, proper esophageal feeding technique can save lives on your operation and improve the overall health of your herd. To get started, it's important to have your supplies clean and ready to use. To begin, we first need to choose what type of feeder to use. There are two standard types of feeders. The most commonly used esophageal feeder is the McGrath feeder. This feeder is a sealed unit that is most practical when handling calves by yourself. The second type of feeder commonly found is a bag feeder. This setup allows for fluids to be poured into the top of the bag and hung from a height to allow the fluids to flow slowly via gravity. In order to prevent aspiration or fluid in the lungs, we need to ensure the calf is in the proper position. In a perfect world, we would always have the calf standing while delivering fluids. However, if the calf is sick and too weak to stand, we can tube them in a sitting position or even lying down. Regardless of how the calf is positioned, it must be properly restrained. If standing, back the calf into a corner for better head control. Never tip the calf's nose upward while tubing. This will change the angle of the entrance into the trachea and make you more prone to pointing the tip of the tube feeder down and entering the trachea. Leave the calf's head in a neutral position that is above the level of its stomach. A calf's mouth can be opened by gently squeezing the corners of the mouth or by grabbing its head over the bridge of the nose and putting slight pressure on the upper palate or gums. Once the mouth is opened, the empty tube should be passed slowly along the tongue to the back of the mouth. Once the tube reaches the back of the tongue, the calf will start chewing and swallowing. At this point, the tube is passed down into the esophagus. If the tube is not advancing easily, then slowly pull it out and try again. Never force the tube down. The esophagus is slightly to the left of the trachea, and once placed, the tube should be easily palpated next to the trachea. If it's properly positioned, the rings of the trachea or windpipe and the rigid enlarged esophagus can both easily be felt. If you can't feel both of these, remove the tube and start again. Remember the 2-2 rule. You should be able to feel the trachea and the stomach tube. Once proper placement is confirmed, the tube can be unclipped and the container can be tipped up to allow liquid to flow down into the stomach. Ensure the liquid is at body temperature or 38 degrees Celsius to prevent shock to an already weak calf. Allow the feeder to empty slowly. This could take upwards of three minutes. The calf will regurgitate less with a slower flow rate. When feeding is finished, clip or kink the tube to ensure no leftover fluids can drain out as the tube is slowly pulled out. This prevents aspiration into the lungs. The tube should be cleaned and sanitized and then allowed to drain and dry. It's crucial to have two esophageal feeding tubes, one for tubing sick or scouring calves and one for giving colostrum to avoid disease and pathogen transfer between calves.